Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to discuss about electroretinogram. Electroretinogram is abbreviated as ERG. It is an electrodiagnostic test. Electrodiagnostic tests are useful in the objective evaluation of visual pathway function. The guidelines for electrodiagnostic tests are laid down by the International Society for Clinical Electrophysiology of Vision that is ISCEV standards. The most commonly used ERG are full field ERG, pattern ERG and multifocal ERG. Other types of ERG are long duration stimulus ERG, S-cone ERG and focal ERG. Now let us discuss about full field ERG. Basically full field ERG records mass electrical activity from retina when stimulated by a flash of light. The indications for full field ERG are when the clinical presentation does not correlate with severity of visual symptoms, when a specific diagnosis has to be confirmed or excluded like retinitis pigmentosa, labors congenital amaurosis, choroideremia, gyrate atrophy, achromatopsia, congenital stationary night blindness and cone dystrophies. When prognostic information is required for management, when investigating family members for known hereditary retinal dystrophies, in the evaluation of carrier states of retinal dystrophies for evaluating suspected functional visual loss in the evaluation of a retinal function in opaque media and in evaluation of a retinal function in uncooperative cases like pediatric cases and in persons with learning difficulties. Now let us discuss the method of full field ERG. A full field that is Gansfeld stimulation is used as you can see in this picture. The retinal response is recorded using electrodes that contact the cornea or nearby bulbar conjunctiva. We can use contact lens electrodes, conductive fibers and foils, conjunctival loop electrodes and corneal wicks. Rod response ERG that is scotopic ERG is recorded in dark adapted eyes after 30 minutes in dark with a dim white flash which is below cone sensitivity and comprises only a B wave as you can see in this picture. Maximal ERG is recorded in dark adapted eyes using a bright white flash and is a mixed rod and cone response as you can see in this picture. This is a photopic ERG and it is acquired with a background that suppresses rod activity. Photopic single flash cone response is obtained in light adapted eyes after 10 minutes in light. Cone derived flicker response is acquired using a 30 Hz white light flicker stimulus. The rods are unable to respond due to poor temporal resolution as you can see in this picture. Coming to the results of full field ERG, a bright single flash stimulus is followed by an initial negative A wave as you can see in this picture and then a positive B wave. There are superimposed oscillatory potentials. This usually takes less than 250 milliseconds. The parameters assessed are amplitude that is micro volts and implicit time in milliseconds of these waves. The A wave primarily arises from photoreceptors. The B wave primarily arises from bipolar and Muller cells. The oscillatory potentials primarily arise from the amacrine cells. By varying the parameters of stimulus that is intensity and frequency and adaptive state of eye different parts of retina can be selectively stimulated and the ISCEV recordings allow localization of abnormal function. For example, ERG is useful in CRVO that is it is useful in differentiating non-ischemic versus ischemic CRVO. In ischemic CRVO, B wave is affected by large areas of ischemia. So there will be reduced B wave amplitude, reduced B to A wave ratio or prolonged B wave implicit time. Now let us discuss about the interpretation of ERG results. Remember full field ERG results should always be correlated with clinical presentation. Reduced A and B waves are seen in conditions like rod cone dystrophies like retinitis pigmentosa, total retinal detachment, metallosis, drug toxicity like phenothiazines, autoimmune retinopathy, cancer associated retinopathy, and ophthalmic artery occlusion. Normal A wave and a reduced scotopic B wave is seen in conditions like 
congenital stationary night blindness, X-link retinoschisis, CRAO or CRVO, myotonic dystrophy, Oguchi's disease, quinine toxicity, and melanoma associated retinopathy. Abnormal photopic and normal scotopic ERG is seen in conditions like achromatopsia and cone dystrophy. Reduced oscillatory potentials can be seen in diabetic patients and it can correlate with increased risk of developing severe PDR and in drug toxicity like gigabatrin toxicity. Now let us discuss about pattern ERG. It is indicated when we want objective assessment of macular function. The method of pattern ERG is a reversing checkerboard evokes small potentials that arise from inner retina. This picture shows the reversing checkerboard used in pattern ERG. Now let us discuss about the results of pattern ERG. A normal pattern ERG evoked according to ISCEV standards comprises a prominent positive component at around 50 milliseconds that is P50 and a large negative component at around 95 milliseconds that is N95. Let us discuss the interpretation of pattern ERG. P50 is photoreceptor driven and is key to assessing macular cone function. N95 originates from macular ganglion cells. Amplitudes, peak times and N95 by P50 ratio are evaluated in interpreting PERG. The N95 by P50 ratio is typically greater than 1.1. Pattern ERG is useful for assessing retinal ganglion cell function in glaucoma and ischemic optic neuropathy. Now let us discuss about multifocal ERG. In standard ERG, we sum electrical potentials from whole retina whereas multifocal ERG creates a topographical functional map of stimulated retina. Now let us discuss the indications of multifocal ERG. It can be used in almost any retinal disorder. It is especially useful where retinal dysfunction is localized or patchy like early hydroxychloroquine toxicity. Now let us discuss the method of multifocal ERG. Multiple small areas of retina are stimulated with appropriately scaled stimuli. Fourier transformation of responses results in topographical localization of retinal function as it varies across stimulated retina. Coming to the results of multifocal ERG, a two-dimensional map demonstrates topographical variation in responses across retina as you can see in this picture. Multifocal ERG can be transformed into a three-dimensional map of retinal function that resembles hill of vision as you can see in this picture. Further transformation showing differences between recorded multifocal ERG and a reference multifocal ERG from normal subjects can be used to highlight areas of loss of function. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section. For more such videos, please check out my playlists. Thank you.